a very old Stuart S50 steam plant, part 24, making the steam and water piping. I need to make a piece of pipe that goes between this T-piece, which holds the lubricator, and connects at the other end to the engine steam chest inlet. Piping up a steam plant is not a difficult job. Making it look good probably is. So it's a good idea to sit and look at the job before you start. I'd just like to mention that I will be doing a separate video all about exhaust piping. If I pipe the exhaust steam on this plant directly to the chimney, there's going to be a problem. Water and oil will drop down onto the burner, which is not a good thing. So I need to think again about how I'm going to do this. Originally, the pipe on this steam plant just went into the chimney, and all the water and oil residue would have just run down and messed up the inside of the boiler casing, and everything in there would have been quite messy. I'm going to try and avoid that. I'm going to put something in the chimney to collect the water so it can be piped away, so only steam comes out of the chimney, not water and oil residue. I couldn't do this if this was a fire tube or a water tube boiler. This type of boiler doesn't need much of a draft up the chimney. So my idea should work okay. More about that in a future video in the series. For now it's back to the steam piping. I'll get that done first. This is a small commercial pipe bender. I have a very small commercial pipe bender that I got from a man in China. This pipe bender is slightly bigger, and I bought this many years ago from Blackgate's Engineering. And it bends the copper pipe just how I want it bent. Sometimes on this 532nd pipe or 4mm pipe, I don't use a pipe bender, I just bend it round my thumb. This clip shows approximately what the piping is going to look like. It's not at the correct angle yet, and it's not cut to size at the other end. As you've just seen, I used a ruler to gauge where to bend the other end of the pipe. The entire pipe's quite bent at the moment, but I will straighten that out once I've finished silver soldering it. And whilst on the subject of silver soldering, here I am in the outside part of the workshop, and I'm going to permanently attach this coned union to one end of the pipe. In this clip, I'm silver soldering a coned union on one end of the pipe. And because this is a tutorial, I'm going to show you one of the pitfalls of silver soldering. Applying too much flux and too much silver solder is a problem. But to be perfectly honest, I generally always apply too much silver solder. But for the tutorials, I like to put more than normal on. You can see that it's a good joint though. Look how it flashes around to the inside of the union cone. Once the pipe had cooled to black, I quenched it in water just to descale it. And while I'm on the subject of descaling piping after you've silver soldered it, Always remember that the scale that you see on the outside of the pipe will be duplicated on the inside of the pipe. That's where the acid pickle bath comes in. You can use various compounds for this, sulfuric acid, citric acid. I use Kilrock K, which is a kettle descaler, and it's quite mild, but it gets rid of all the scale from inside the pipe as well as around the outside. A bit of scale inside the pipe is not a real problem with a steam engine, Unless, of course, it's the pipe that feeds gas to the gas burner on these small models. If you don't use an acid pickle bath to get rid of all the scale, what will happen is some of the scale will come loose and then it will block up the gas jet. And if that happens, it's a real pain because you have to remove the gas jet to clear the blockage using a pricker, a very fine piece of wire, and then reassemble it all and wait for the next piece of scale to fall off the pipe from the inside. I speak from experience on this. Over now to my trusty Boxford lathe, and I'm making a brass fitting that I will silver solder onto the end of a short piece of pipe, which will serve as the water feed to the hand pump. This is a very routine job. Face the end, use a centre drill, and once the centre drill has just made an impression in it, use a twist drill to drill all the way through. Because this is 530 seconds of an inch pipe, it seemed like a good idea to drill it all the way through 530 seconds of an inch. This is the easiest way to feed water to a hand pump. Once it's assembled in place, I will use this to fit a piece of silicone rubber tubing on the end of it, the other end of which will go into a bottle of water. That's the hole drilled all the way through it. The next part of the job is just to clean it up first. And for this as usual, I'm using some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper. And finally, I part off the component using a parting tool. Normally I would put something underneath the piece of metal that's been parted off, but not this time because I've only just cleaned out the chip tray, so when it falls into the chip tray I'll be able to find it. Yes, I found it, took it into the outer part of the workshop and silver soldered it to a piece of pipe. And then the piece of bent pipe as you see here, with this fitting on the end, 
is bolted into place on the pump. The upper pipe that's on the pump, as you can see in this clip, is the feed to the clack valve, or the check valve, which is a one-way valve to allow water into the boiler, but no steam and water out. Here you see the general arrangement, the pipe still needs straightening up, and the main steam pipe needs cladding using some string. The job's starting to shape up now, and it's almost time for a steam test, I look forward to that one. But that's it for this episode, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.